Hello and welcome back to Wiki Talks. I am Usman Wakar and we are joined by Brigadier Retired Wakar Hassan Khan. And today we are going to be discussing about Turkey and its role in the region and its economic development and its impact. So let's get right into it. Uh, Mr. Wakar, how do you view the leadership of President Tayyip Erdogan? I think uh, President Tayyip Erdogan has played a major role in development of Turkey where they have reached. Uh, if you look at his rise also, that is very significant in terms of leadership. Hmm. Uh, he's almost 70 years and uh, he was educated in a system which was developed by uh, Mr. Namatin Arvakan. So this was a school system and I would say an ideological system which was running parallel to uh, the Kamalist school of thought in Turkey. And there was a need felt that probably uh, you have to balance it out, so a conservative school of thought. Uh, but I think uh, Tayyip Adagan grew in politics, joined very early. And uh, then, of course, uh, he was mayor of uh, Istanbul in, I think, uh, early 90s and did a lot of work. And uh, he became very popular uh, because of uh, his role as a mayor and then, of course, his rise into the AKP party or the uh, Justice and uh, Development Party, which I think he co-founded. And later on, he remained uh, prime minister with uh, President Abdullah Gul. And finally, uh, the system was changed, constitutional change. Uh, and he became the president, uh, a very powerful president. So I would say that uh, the rise of Tayyip Erdogan is also a story of Turkey, the modern Turkey. And uh, in terms of his leadership, uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, the way he's conducted international diplomacy, uh, even developed very good relations, conflict management, I think it has been a success story. Good thing is that Turkey got you know, a consistent policy because of AKP party being in power for almost two decades. So they're able to focus and uh, take Turkey onto path of progress. Tayyip Erdogan has had a very important role in the development of Turkey and the economic revival. That is very correct. And next, uh, what is the difference between Turkey before Erdogan and now in 2023? I think before uh, uh, President Tayyip Erdogan, there been political instability. I think it was something like where we are, Pakistan is today. Uh, so there's uh, economic uh, challenges. Uh, there were four regional challenges. Uh, and then, of course, was political instability and I would say even kind of uh, uh, corruption in the higher, uh, hierarchy of political system. So, he basically succeeded, uh, you know, Tansi Chiller, she, she was uh, the Prime Minister or uh, <coughs> President Salman Demiral. So, so I would not say that uh, these leaders per se were corrupt, I think there were a lot of corruption uh, within the system. So, uh, President Tayyip Erdogan, uh, you know, brought uh, something uh, different. And that's why he's been in power for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, so I would say that in terms of Turkey before Erdogan and Turkey now is a much different Turkey, a very assertive, very confident, economically very strong. Uh, it's one of the uh, fastest growing economies in Europe. Uh, if you look at the production, uh, tourism, everything. So, so I would say it's a chain Turkey and uh, actually we have to learn a lot from how to manage a country. Mm, yes, indeed. How has Turkey harnessed its demographic and economic potential? Yeah, I think every country is endowed with, uh, you know, uh, some potential. Uh, uh, Allah Almighty is always endowed nations and states with potential in now leadership, how it harnesses. Now, if you look at demographics, one of the uh, largest countries in terms of population. And uh, in terms of natural resources, places for tourism, uh, it is endowed with uh, these resources like any other country. But main thing is how do you harness the potential? I'll just give you example of uh, two, three things. And another thing I think is the Turkish advantage is the historical and cultural uh, confluence civilization. So there are five civilizations which converge like Pakistan. We are also known as zipper of civilization. Something said one is of course it is in the crossroads of Asia and Europe. So this place is known as Asia Minor. And uh, so you have basically uh, I would say uh, influence or uh, learning from both continents, Europe and Asia. Uh, so you had uh, the Greco-Roman civilization, very close, Italy, Greece and the Mediterranean. Uh, then of course you had interaction with the Byzantium, one of the big empires of that time. So Turkey inherits that history and culture. Slavic civilization, uh, if you look across Black Sea, Balkans, Eastern Europe and Ottomans have been ruling Eastern Europe for a very long time, so there was an interaction. And then you have, uh, you know, pan-Arab or Arab-Islamic civilization because of Islam's advent into Turkey and their interaction with the Middle East and then, of course, the Ottomans themselves. 
because Ottoman Muslims also built their own civilization which is uh, one of the well managed and large civilization and it remained you know as an empire for a very long time and then of course is there uh, genetically they are Turko Mongols so they have uh, you know linkages with uh, far eastern Russia or Siberia so I think this gives a lot of advantage so how they have harnessed so that is I think very important then we come to tourism itself uh, if you look at tourism is now giving them more than 60 billion dollars I think recent figures are like 62 billion compared with all export of Pakistan so just tourism industry because it is well managed a secure environment they have created an environment of course there are good beaches on Black Sea Sea of Marmara or Mediterranean or on Bosporus but how do you manage that you know how do you make I think millions of uh, tourists come to just Istanbul every year and Istanbul city actually earns more than entire Pakistan tourism so, so that's the kind of and within that they've created uh, let's say medical tourism because I think Turkish doctors are very good in uh, cosmetic surgery so whether it is facial you know dentistry or even hair transplant so so they are earning like more than a billion dollars just from medical tourism so I think this is how you harness uh, look at their automotive industry I think uh, one of the largest producers of cars and spare parts, 50% of spare parts of uh, cars and buses are provided by Turkey. So this is the kind of industry which is producing. So and imagine they are competing uh, at European standards. Same as I think if you look at now uh, Turkish cars are being introduced in Pakistan as well. So, so these are some of the examples. Uh, just tourism and look at the agriculture, how they have developed modern agriculture as good as anywhere in Europe or Brazil. So, so I think they have tried to uh, and then of course they have gold reserve, they have uh, oil and gas also I think especially in the offshore on the Black Sea. Uh, so, so this is how do you harness uh, and then of course is how do you basically train your human resource. Look at a uh, company like Havelsant, they have been able to uh, bring in state of the art uh, system and swarm warfare, artificial intelligence, uh, one of the you know best universities. Uh, uh, are in Turkey like Sabanchi University you know it is uh, doing very uh, I would say good job in terms of uh, information technology. So these are all success stories in terms of harnessing economic demographic uh, potential. Yes as you mentioned that Turkey does have a very important geographic location as it connects Europe and uh, Asia. Uh, what do you think the role of Turkey has been regionally and on a global scale? Uh, I think uh, because of its uh, geographical location, its alliance uh, in NATO, it uh, uh, and of course uh, it has inheritance of the Ottoman Empire, so it has been a leading player in Europe in any case. Uh, but uh, I think in the current uh, regime, uh, Turkey has played uh, a very dominant role in diplomacy, regional and international affairs. Uh, just two examples, one is of course uh, uh, regional conflict management like Syria. Middle East, uh, they even tried to you know ease that uh, tension between uh, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, uh, and I think uh, Qatar Saudi Arabia rapprochement. Uh, similarly, uh, Iran uh, Saudi rapprochement. There was some part played because Turkey felt that if you have peace in Yemen conflict in Syria, uh, they have even relations with Israel, diplomatic relations. So this mm -hmm. is a, and they also helped the Turks. Then when there was conflict in Libya, they've been helping, and now even in during this disaster, for dam burst. Uh, 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 Turkey has I think supported uh, and, and then of course is the Black Sea grain deal which is just recent because Russia Ukraine conflict uh, th there was a need that uh, these are two large grain producing areas that the supply should not be cut off so I think Turkey has played a major role by coordinating despite that two nations are at war still coordinating that you know the grains passes through Bosphorus peacefully and even I think some of the Turkish ports are used for that uh, Turkey is also providing alternate route for oil and gas to Europe. So I think this is a very smart move. If North is cut off because of Russia-Ukraine war, so why not uh, use that? In G20, I think he was uh, President Erdogan was in Delhi, and uh, he conducted himself very positively. Uh, but when there was a talk of uh, this uh, new corridor, uh, like India Middle East uh, Europe corridor, because then indirectly it starts affecting Turkish you know position as a corridor uh, Turkey has shown their resentment or resistance because they would like to integrate uh, you know Iraq uh, maybe Syria Turkey 
uh, for passage through Europe. So I think they have played uh, their role in different, uh, they are part of the OIC. Uh, they have always supported Pakistan on the Kashmir cause. So, and Pakistan uh, Turkey have very special relations. So, so I would say that uh, it has been uh, an excellent role in international conflict management. And wherever they feel they have to exert, they do exert. Okay. Yeah, you have given us amazing insight about Turkey and how it, it has developed and how it has a, had an economic revival. What do you think lessons are that we can learn as Pakistanis? As Pakistan, what lessons can we learn from Turkey? I think all four or five things that we have discussed that uh, definitely there is a, uh, economic development and there is political stability. So, Pakistan has to uh, move on a trajectory which provides us political uh, stability. Uh, then of course is how do you harness demographic and uh, physical potential, your geographical position, how do you harness that. Uh, so there is definitely a Turkish model that you could be part of uh, the solution instead of becoming part of the problem. Uh, at times Pakistan is the like that you know we remain part of the problem despite our role played in the region for peace and we definitely have a slightly different environment because you have a hostile neighbor on the east. Uh, then is how do you basically uh, do the human development? I think if you look at Turkey before the Badagan, within two decades or uh, the AKP, uh, I think there is a sea change because a lot of effort was put, put in human development, education, uh, in science and technology, real science and technology uh, and then learning from uh, the West, Europe and North America. Still I think Turkey graduates, you know, graduating from the universities are hot cakes for Europe and American <coughs> market in information technology, uh, medical doctors. So I think that is the, that's the biggest uh, and then of course is a culture of you know coexistence, uh, camaraderie within communities. Uh, why Turkish tourism draws millions of people? Why it earns them like 60 billion dollars every year? So it means that uh, it's such a nice place in terms of environment, people friendly, that people would flock. So it's not that Pakistan doesn't have uh, you know, tourism potential. If you look at our northern areas, Turkey doesn't have anything like that. But how do you do you feel it easier? The communication infrastructure good, or uh, let's say you have peaceful environment, uh, and uh, then of course is the education. Are uh, there people educated to guide the tourists and all that? So uh, I not say that uh, we should be undermining, but definitely there are certain good things to learn in terms of. And then as uh, whenever there is, a, let's say if there is a military. Uh, potential or a position, how do you use it for conflict resolution also and for security. So, Turkey has been upright in NATO, in Black Sea, in Syrian conflict, wherever they felt uh, they also had problem with insurgency in some of the areas. So, the military goes there and settles it. So, I think we have a lot to learn and uh, definitely Pakistan-Turkey relationship is very unique uh, right from I think Khilafat movement. Uh, so, there is a kind of uh, a code of honor between both nations. So, we can definitely build upon that and all Pakistanis who go there or the brothers come here, I think we should be expanding people to people contact and learn from this great nation. Well, thank you so much Mr. Rukar for the very helpful and informative insight on the on Turkey and its development and everything and its re uh, regional role. And I think that's about it for today. Thank you so much once again and thank you viewers for watching. If you have any thoughts, leave them down below in the comments. Like, subscribe. Goodbye.